new twist in the race for the APC presidential ticket as the issue of zoning now looks like the party has thrown open in the APC too, just like the PDP. And today, the President and the Attorney General of the Federation have approached the Supreme Court to seek interpretation of the Section 8412 of the Electoral Act and the resignation of political appointees. We dig deeper in that issue. Hello everyone, welcome to Politics Today live on Channel Television. I'm Sean Wakimale in Abuja where we've been enjoying a clement weather. Very, very clement one indeed. Thank you so much everyone. And let's get started, shall we? I'd like to ask you a question this evening everyone. Can we see a woman president in Nigeria come 2023? Well, maybe I should ask uh, perhaps a more realistic one if you may debate on that matter. Can we see more than one woman presidential candidate on the ballot come 2023. Well, it appears some Nigerians are agitating for a change in the manner in which men have overloaded and taking over the political space. The Independent National Electric Commission, ANEC, is asking political parties to provide a leverage for female aspirants contesting in the 2023 general elections. At a one-day workshop for leaders of political parties on women participation in primaries, organized by the International Republican Institute in collaboration with INEC. The National Commissioner and Chairman, Outreach and Partnership Committee of INEC says parties must avoid the temptation of stereotyping women in the coming election. Take a listen to them. Time has come for political parties to identify and mitigate, if not eliminate, hindrances impeding women participation in party politics. Parties should address stereotypes and biases on how the practices of holding meetings at odd times. Monetization of internal party politics, violence, and threats to personal safety and security of women, gender unfriendly party institutional processes, and other, on other biases. I'm happy the women came out too. The way they are coming out, we have more than five or six princess and aspirants. It's my joy. Initially, I thought there was going to be only me, and I just feel. But now, more political parties, whether they mean it though or they don't, the women are there saying they are presidential candidates. But now we have to go back and find out how, we're gonna, how are we going to convince the delegates that the money should be stepped down to a level women can afford. Or, in fact, choose the women in their political parties, let them skate through the, 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 the delegate election and become candidates. This is now a challenge to the women folk and also to the men folk. But I'm throwing that challenge to everyone. Don't sit at home on an election day. Come out and vote. Well, have you got to your PVC? That's another big question. we get to that some other day. It's another story for another day. Tonight, very frank conversation we'll be having on the program. One of those who pulled out of the race, and he gave a reason why he pulled out. Is that reason justified, considering the premise that, okay, zoning should be considered? Where are we going in that conversation? The PDP seems to have laid that to rest. They said they've thrown it open. What is the APC saying? Governor of Ondo State, Rotimi Akredolu, said that the party cannot be amb ambiguous about that matter. What would the APC do in that respect? One of uh, the chieftains and the leaders of the APC will be joining me right on the program, and we get a very sound legal opinion on the issue of um, the Electoral Act, Section 8412. It does look to me like um, a wet weather in Lagos, but a loaded program for you right here on the program. Stay with me. Let me first and foremost let you see our political roundup stars.
The All Progressives Congress in Taraba State says it will not tolerate any acts of subjugation by politicians in the state to influence the list of delegates ahead of state and national primary elections. Addressing party officials, the state chairman, El Sudi Tukur, is insisting that the state will only work with the list provided by the National Working Committee and will resist any attempt by any group of people to tamper with the delegates' list. And another presidential aspirant of the PDP on tour of consultations across the country is the publisher of Ovation magazine, Chief Dele Momodu. Mr. Momodu had visited Mina Niger State where he met two former heads of state, General Ibrahim Babangida at his Mina home and General Abdul Salami Abubakar. The presidential aspirant says the meetings were cordial and productive, and he has spoken with them on his ambition to lead Nigeria to a prosperous future. Former Senate President Bukala Saraki too is on the road, and at one of his stops he says he is capable of fixing Nigeria if given the opportunity. Addressing delegates of the party ahead of the party's primaries, Mr. Saraki notes that his experience as a player in the private sector, two-term governor and president of the Senate, stood him apart and put him far ahead of other aspirants jostling for the PDP's presidential flag. Distinguished delegates, we all understand. We are talking not only for today, we are talking for your children who are, who are unemployed now. Whatever they are bringing now will not give your children jobs. Some women say they are tired of being ruled by old people in the country. In their hundreds, women in Katsina State have taken to the streets to show their support for the presidential ambition of Governor Yahaya Bellu. The supporters who were drawn from several groups and associations across 34 local government areas of Katsina State converged on the Katsina Local Government Service Commission to express their support for the governor of Kogi State. Dozens of protesters stormed the headquarters of the People's Democratic Party today in Abuja, calling on the leadership of the party to prevail on the chairman of the PDP in the federal capital territory to recall all suspended ward chairman and delegate to the planned convention on May 28 and 29. Members of the group who are supporters of Prince Taribo Williams, who is an FCT senatorial aspirant, describes the suspension of those delegates as a witch hunt and a scheme to vote their candidate out of the race at the primaries. And the Action People's Party, APP, in Ekiti State has warned the Independent National Electoral Commission that the June governorship election will not be valid if the name of its new candidate is not published as ordered by the court. The party says it has substituted the name of its candidate within the stipulated period, backing same up with required court pronouncement replacing its former candidate with Mr. Adain Kali. If they didn't change the name by INEC, I know there's no election in the Kiki State because we have followed the uh, process. If they've submitted their document to INEC, let them wait for INEC to react. And definitely, if they've done so, as they said, the commission will get back to them. There you have it. You've been served. Your political roundup stories and now you've been up to date. Let's now bring you into the picture of some of your major stories, politically speaking, in Nigeria. The past days have seen twists and turns in the politics of the presidential primaries of the ruling APC, um, the All Progressive Congress, with a number of aspirants throwing their heart in the ring. Perhaps the height of the intensity of the race uh, is uh, within the, the corridors of uh, the party and the moment where the order by the president that those seeking office should resign their ministerial positions. We saw some of them pull out of the race to return to their ministerial appointment. Some newspaper headlines said, quote, they chickened out. It was predominantly a southern dominated list until the emergence of a few more, uh, more aspirants, especially from the northern uh, uh, part of the country. But what is the position of the APC on the issue of zoning? Governor Akiri Dulu at the time has said, uh, asked the party to come out plainly and make its position known on that matter. Tonight, I will be speaking with one of the aspirants who pulled out of the race and uh, present uh, on the issue of the present, uh, the situation of the present race, uh, state of the race in the APC. I'm being joined by a two-term governor of Abia State, a businessman and a sitting senator representing Abia State in the National Assembly, the Senate Whip, Senator Oji Uzo Kalu, joins us live here in our Abuja studio. Thank you, Excellency, for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, I know you, for having you, me. you came out to say you're pulling out of the race. Uh, you were one of the frontline aspirants in the APC 
when you emerged, when you made your position known. Uh, and he said it was because of the Senate president. Can you shed more light on that? Yes. Not, um, thank you very much, viewers and Sean. And not to tell you because of Senate president, because when we were fighting for a southern candidate to emerge, and we agreed collectively, the three southern zones, agreed that it was going to be southeast. No other zone supposed to have put in anybody. So we started seeing candidates from southwest, south, south, and etc. And knowing where I stand, and having been with Abel Lawa for the last 41 years, and I know there are two zones that have never been president, the northeast and the southeast. And I don't have the number to give that nomination to myself. So what do you do? Because I expected our southern brothers and colleagues to support directly southeast. If you read, if you have read the article I did, the fairness I know, the fairness I know explained everything to you. Because if we are talking about south, if it's not southeast, it should be not east, because these are two zones that have never been president. What about North I Central? have said this, I have said Babangi that have been president. It, it Democrat, was, we're talking about Democrats. It was Democrats, any name you call it. He was president for eight years. Abdul Salam had been president. And Those are military Abdusalam. heads of state. It doesn't make any meaning, but they rule the country. There is power on what they have done to their zones. I'm not a psychopath, you know me. If what I'm doing is not right, I don't, every, all Nigerians can be against me, but I don't care. But the truth will come out. Every other thing will fail, but the truth will start the test of time. You think that the present, the state of the race in your party is not fair to your zone right now? No, the southerners themselves, the southwest, south, uh, south, south, they were not fair to us. Because what we could have done, I, people who continue receiving presidential aspirants from that zone are making a lot, a, a lot of mistakes. They could have asked them not to buy tickets. We did it in 1999. What is different in doing it today? So if we have to do anything that looks rational, they have to be southeast. If it's not southeast, I'm in Lawasi by choice because it's from northeast. Now, it, it, it does look like uh, you were one of those, uh, the newspaper headlines have described that like you chickened out. No, Sean. I'm sure you know me very well. I'm, I'm a warlord. I'm not chicken out for any war. I'm capable of uh, financing presidential elections. I'm capable of fighting. I have everything to be president. But I felt that the right thing must be done. We need to realign. I need to take back Igbos to national politics. They are not in national politics now. Have you been able to achieve just that? I will achieve it in the next one year. I will take them back to the national politics. You want to be a running mate? No. Because that's what we understand. No, I've already Your bought... Your main agenda. No. If you cannot be a president, at no, least no, no, you no, can no. get... No, 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 no. I've already bought my Senate seat. In fact, they also say My that constituency are waiting, waiting for me. Please, not No, you don't time. tell me what they are waiting Hold for. Hold on, we are here. I mean, because, yes. look, I've dealt, I've dealt related with politicians for so long that... I'm not a politician. I'm an entrepreneur. You are a politician. Address me properly. Pa you are one. No, a address a man that runs... If you have become a governor for eight years... Balance sheet company is not a politician. I'm an entrepreneur. You can also be called a politician. No, no, you cannot call me a politician because I'm not one. I don't talk like politicians. I talk straight. All the time I've been too tangled, you know, I talk straight. It's either I employ 13,000 people, you cannot call me a politician. I'm not a politician. Well, it's, unfo it's unfortunate, Your Excellency, that you cannot. Unf I, mean, unf I mean, it's just like you're saying that uh, you're either you're a man or a woman. We know that you're a man. So it is not what you say you are. It is what you have no, done. No, because there's the a way you people you are, look you've been at governor for eight years. You've been senator no, no, for no. Almost there's a way four you years. People look and yet you at, say no, you're no, not no. a politician. No, 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 no. There's a way you people discuss politician. I'm not that kind of politician. I'm a politician with multiple address. You you can say that in, you're, in, you're in a, the, a politician you with, work, with 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 another. The, no, in the media job you work, I employ 35 percent of journalists in Nigeria. Whether it print radio. Television. I employ 35% of journalists in Nigeria. So I don't put me... That is just... That is not the only title that you have. That is no, what you no, like no, no. I'm just so. telling you the job you are doing, the way you are doing. I employ 
people. Percent. Entire journalist. You are an employee of labor. No, uh, I'm an employee taken. of journalists. Yeah. Uh, taken. That, but you are a politician. And in that respect, uh, Your Excellency, let me ask you, um, because you, you, you've said to me right here on the program mm -hmm. that you will be the candidate of the APC. You yes. said you have all what it takes. I, I but you have told have... us tonight that you don't have the number. No, I, I have all it takes, but I don't have the, the delegates and the number from Southeast. But why did you say you had all it takes? I to... have all it takes. But it does look do like it. you realize but that. But my southern brothers are not uh, supporting us. They, I, we, we have supported South when we supported President Abbasanjo. We supported Vice President uh, uh, Usimbajo. We supported Pre Vice President Jonathan for five years. We supported President Jonathan for six years. Why can't they support us? So any Southerner that is not from Southeast coming to run for president is a taboo. It's a betrayal. It's a betrayal. They are the ones betraying us. But we are wiser today. We are more wiser than they think we used to be. Nobody can make us quarrel with the not because it, it, to be a president of Nigeria is advantageous to be with the not. So I'm not pretending about it. If my other brothers, because they are good academicians, they are good uh, uh, lawyers or good uh, business people, they don't see what I see. What I see is different. I have to see the reality on the table. So when you say you don't have the numbers, in terms of the uh, college aid election, on the, the, delegates the delegates are about 7,000 something delegates. The Northern Nigeria have 4,800. And the Southern Nigeria as a whole have 3,000 and some change. So, uh, where am I going? And the South is having barely about 700 and some change. How am I going to get the number? I mean, you, have you heard what uh, is being reported that Tunubu said he's had how many governors that are signatory to his ambition uh, for the primary election and that uh, he has ordinary delegates? He's mentioned a few numbers of them. Uh, you heard that? Have you read that? No. I have not. You can tell me the story. All right. I mean, so since you have not but heard it, let us go I want it. to tell you, I have spoken to nine candidates running for president, and they are already, already discussing to step down for Ahmed Lawa. But, but they are demand. I'm telling them I'm not Ahmed Lawa. They should come on Tuesday, like this, tomorrow, or next tomorrow, they should go, go with me to Ahmed Lawa to negotiate face to face. Because I'm not a bad lawyer. What would the negotiation be? I don't know them. I don't know. I'm not Who are these man. nine people that you're I cannot about? tell you until they appear. Are they from the South? Or I don't know where they come from, but they have nine people that are speaking to me. They are ready to step down for Ahmed Lawa. Well, will Ahmed Lawa return there? That's going to be 900 million. Will he be returning there? No, nobody is going to return anybody's. Uh, I made that one clear to them. We are not returning anybody to anybody. But none of them have agreed. None of them are already in pocket right now. Yes. So, and their delegates are also in... in they in will now. bring along their delegates. Is it then true what they are saying, that your ambition is if you cannot get the president, you want to be VP? No. I don't, I'm not the one that appoints VP. That, that, that's the reason why you are doing no, all of this. No, it's not true. That you I have already purchased... You are looking... Yeah. Listen, I've already purchased my Senate form. I'm very happy being in the Senate. That they say also and you, are, you my want to be Senate president. No, listen, forget about what I want to be. We have to cook the food before you eat it. The, the, what I want to be is immaterial. I'm looking for a candidate that will give Nigerian people leadership. We are looking for leadership. And that we are is, looking that for is in Ahmed Lawan. Yeah, of course. I've known him 41 years ago. We are roommates in the university. So he's strong to give Nigerian people what they're looking for. That is what we are looking for. Beyond we being your roommate, what, what does he possess to become Nigeria's president? Or you just no. want to give you, you want to do a favor to your no. whole country? No, listen, friend? let me tell you. I said I've known him for 41 years. We stabilized the Senate. All the bills that are impossible to pass, the, the petroleum uh, PIB that is now PIA, the uh, amendment of the electoral law, you can see how we did it. Well, everything is done business wise. So I want to tell you, I may have capability of leading the nation. And I know he has the capacity. I, it's not in doubt what he will do. He, he must not have everything. What he will not have is going to be a teamwork. It's not about it lowers, well, He will assemble the best team under our supervision for Nigerian people to get what they want. That will be prosperity to Nigerians. Let me show Nigerians uh, this list again. This perhaps updated. 
uh, because uh, recently some, some, some of them have pulled out of the race and we've seen some new entrants into the race. Um, uh, but the list of the presidential aspects Bishop, I of, told you. Yeah. What did you say, sir? You had I told you before that uh, it's on, on either south, east, or south, south. That will be president. Or, or south, northwest, that will be president. Or that not, those are only two zones. Northeast or northwest? Northeast or southeast. That will be president. So if we are not giving to northeast, we will go to uh, we will go give to southeast. We will go to northeast. So as you look at the list, as yeah, look at the list is right there on the screen. So you have your friends uh, across the regions here, from Bola Tinubu to Yaya Bello to Professor Yemi Oshibajo to Dave Umahi, um, uh, Dave Umahi, um, Rocha Zokorocha. Uh, these are your your friends from the southeast. Everybody there is my friend. There's but I'm nobody. saying that from the I region, have from the southeast region. I've worked with almost everybody there. I've worked with almost everybody there. There is nobody that is a stranger there to me. So in all of this, can you identify the now nine, nine people that you're talking about? How can I identify when I told you that it's, not, it's wrapped up or they finished talking with... They are going to see I'm in Lawa today, tomorrow, or Wednesday. Say to your camera, and I'm in Lawa's house. You will see that. What time is this? I don't know. It's you. You're a journalist. <laughs> you should find time to do that. <laughs> all right. Let me show you again what the governor of Undo State said. Mm -hmm. And he's asking the party to come to the table with equity. He has said that the party must ensure the principle of rotational representation guides its decision going forward just as such principle was adhered to at the APC National Convention. Uh, the governor says that um, it's time for the party leaders to make a categorical statement devoid of equivocation on the pattern of succession. He, he released a statement uh, about two weeks ago saying it is very expedient that the party avoid self-inflicted crisis before the general election. If the party does not come out, PDP has come out to say they have thrown it open. Is it fair for the APC to keep quiet or to be ambiguous no, no, about the that? issue of zoning? No, listen. Uh, the governor of Fondo says is my in-law. I'm sure you know. And um, I, I want to assure you that did he advise those running from the south? His equity means southeast or excluding southeast. Is that his equity? The governors of the south are no, 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 no. in the Now I want to give you a if, premise. If, if he's talking about equity, equity should be southeast. Anything less than southeast is not equity. It can go back to the north. That is what I'm telling so you. So if, if the southeast does not cannot have it, give get, get, let give it back, back to the northeast. So that's your position. That's my position. That is the position. If you cannot come to us, we yeah we because get if they come to the that north, is, the three zones went to the north. We agree. We can give to the south. And they don't want to leave it to Southeast. Why should I allow them to take it when they have no presidency before? We are only wiser today. We are, we are wise people. We are no longer the mumbu they used to cheat. We are very wise. So today. the Southeast, uh, I mean, the, politically, the Southeast is wiser. Today, yes. We are not just doing our business. You we have a game plan politics. right now. Yes, of course. I will unfold it. Is the president aware of all of this? No, I don't work with the president. I'm not the reason president. why I'm asking is because he's the leader of your party. No, I don't know. I, I don't work for him. You should ask his political advisor. But he's your friend. Yes, if he's my friend, there's not everything he And does. the leader of your party. Yes, so he's the in the direction of the party. and the manner in which your party go, in such a crucial time as this, don't you think if your position from the big weeks in the South is, is that if it cannot come to us, let it go back to the North? If that kind of position, you think that the president should not be aware? Why not? president is a human being. He should be listening to the gossip. And moreover, let me tell you, this governor, some of them are very funny. You want to pick your successor, you want to pick your deputy, you want to pick your chairman of the party, and they don't want the president to pick who will succeed him. The president must be able to say, this, I want this man, like they did in the state. I was a governor. I picked my successor, and I fought for him to to be the governor. So they should be fair. All these my uh, colleagues who are governors today, they should be fair to the president and, and, and some current dagger. It's not the fighting. What we're looking for is good governance. We don't care where the president comes from, but we care who is capable of giving good governance. And uh, that is what I'm telling you. Do, you uh, I mean, do your people agree with that statement, that you don't care where the president comes from? Well, if you can't give it to us, we don't care where it comes from. 
What I'm telling you is the position of most Igbos. Some might disagree, but some most that know politics. Because you can't continue all letting us to vote for you. You don't vote for us. If, if we vote for you, you vote for us. If you you will see what you see in 2023 will be new Igbo thinking. The new Igbo thinking will be if you give me, I give you. If you don't give me, I don't give you. We have voted for President Obasanjo. We have voted for President Jonathan. We have voted for Vice President Sibanjo. They should find sincerity in their mind to vote for us. I withdraw if they zone it back to South East tomorrow. I'll reactivate my, my, my form and face anybody in the primary. Unfortunately, they must give it to us. Unfortunately, you may not be able to do that. No, there's still window for, for, for substitution. Not from the aspirant point of view, but no, from the no, party's no, no, point no. of view. No, there is a substitution. I make up substitution of presidential candidates, governorship candidates, senatorial candidates, and etc. So we still have window in July and August. There's still window for substitution. If it's ever going to the south, they will be substituted to, to be the candidate because I'm a strong candidate that have everything it takes to make a good president. Let me give you a scenario, Your Excellency. Yes, and the scenario will be. Should a southerner emerge as a candidate of the APC and a northerner emerges as a candidate of the PDP, does your party stand a chance at the general elections? Let me tell you the problem. Whether APC or PDP, the problem we have that is Kwakwaso. Our problem is not APC or PDP. Why? So, because of Kwakwaso is already a presidential candidate, we are a problem. If it will be forced, we are forcing every party. That was what I saw when I pulled out. Because so if they are giving me the ticket from Southeast, I will lose. And it will not be good for us. Because Kwankwaso left PDP and went to NNP something. NNPP. I don't know. Yeah? NNPP. And if Kwankwaso, if the PDP, APC, give their ticket to Southern Nigeria, Kwankwaso is already a president in the wedding. I can assure you that. Knowing the mentality of what is the truth on the ground. Unless you are telling yourself lies. I don't tell myself lies. I'm a student of realism. I'm a student that tells myself the truth. So what was so is a problem? Because if PDP goes to north, APC goes to south. It's as well telling me to pack my luggages and go. I will not have a job in the National Assembly. I will not have a job in the federal government of Nigeria. That is the truth. Because we want to change things that will be for the people, and give them the kind of leadership we, are, we have given to ordinary people. So Kwankwaso has changed the dynamics. The dynamics of Yes, of, whether of, you of want things. to believe me or not, Kwankwaso has changed the dynamics. No, so, and as it, as, as, as it is right now, uh, it's better for your party to go north. Yes, that is the truth. Without being said, I have no emotion. I'm speaking the truth from my heart. It's, it, my, my party will be fools if they don't go to us. not. Because of Let's secular. look at that list again. You can look at Let's the list. look at the list again. No, and and I wanted to, I mean, I'd like to identify the number of uh, the northerners uh, or the uh, No, no, no. Me, I'm not going for number of northerners. I'm going for Abel Lawa. No, I'm saying that... I, I'm just, just going for a man that capable that will do the job. I don't have two candidates. No, there, there is Yayabelo. No, I don't have north. two candidates. I don't even want you to call anybody's name to me. Yayabelo is my personal friend. But since Abel Lawa came out, if Abel Lawa was not there, I would support Yaya Bello. So with the narrative that you are giving tonight, there are two northerners on that list, Yaya Bello and Abel Lawa. As far as you're concerned, the race is between the two of them. No, for your, the the close, it's, your a close, it's a close matter. That is a close matter in my mind to Abel Lawa. We understand that the governor Bagudu also, in fact, took a form. Yeah, that, is his, uh, uh, that is what he wants to do. I have made up my mind where I'm going to. And most people have made up their mind where they would like to be. All right, let's take a breather. Because we're not, we not done yet with uh, talking to you right here on the program. We take a break. And when we return, we get our closing moment with uh, Senator Ojuz Okalu, former governor of Abia State. And at some point, we'll be bringing in Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Jibrin Okutepa. He will be joining me to uh, give us legal insights to the issue of electoral act section 84 software, the confusion, President Buhari and the AGF, Attorney General, have gone to the Supreme Court to seek interpretation on that matter. We get legal insight 
from the Sinan Booker, when we return from this break as well. Tell us again. Thank you so much, everyone. Welcome back to the program. We've been discussing with uh, the former two-term governor of Abia State, Senator Oji Uzo Kalu, who uh, is also the Senate whip. Thank you so much for staying with us. Thank you. I'm very sure that you have read and heard what uh, Chief Edwin Clark said about you. He said you betrayed the Southeast people by your withdrawal. I'm sure you have also read what I say about him, that they betrayed us. Because Chief Clark is an elder statesman. I don't want to talk about him. But if Chief Clark is on good conscience, he will not be... He will not be uh, welcoming presidential candidates in his house from South, South, and Southwest. He could have asked them that is the third of South East. They are just saying there two weeks ago, I have been saying it for two years, three years, that is an Igbo uh, president of Igbo extraction will solve the problem. But they just jump out. I saw my brother Silva went to show him his form. Why didn't he ask Silva to drop his ambition for me? If he's an honest man. I saw President Ambassador also saying that he wants us to go south southeast. Why is he saying it today? He could have done it when he was president. He had all the powers to have done it. But see, these people think we will continue being their fools. We are not going to be fools. You know, I have opinion. Because I run a large conglomerate, a company of five billion dollars. I run a big company in entire Africa. So I'm not afraid of telling people what I want to tell them. I've never gone to any minister's office to beg for contract. I've never gone to anybody's house to look for business because I'm a trader, trading on commodities that move every day. So I'm the only one that can, I'm the conscience of our people. So people are afraid because they carry crude oil from an APC, which I have done many years back. I don't do it again. They sell arms to defense, which I've done many years ago. I don't do it again. So... As a trader, my job is to speak the truth. Who found himself in politics? These people should stop deceiving us. If you wanted an Igbo man to be president, I bought all those people. The only man who is sincere is a young man, Deji. He's very sincere. If these people are sincere, they could have called these guys and said, please don't buy from. Allow the Southeast to buy from. And if there was nobody from Southwest, South, South buying from, they will be scared. The Northerners will support us. They will support everybody. But Kwon Kwasu has made everything to be different. It's a different scenario. Maybe I could have gotten the ticket and I'll be beaten by another candidate. And this is why I stepped down. I'm not afraid of anybody. I'm not... You're, you're talking about Kwon Kwasu. And if that list goes back up again, mm -hmm. and you think, because a lot of people have said, you know, it, it just simply means if the president just comes up and raises the hand of someone in your party, uh, as the presidential candidate, because he's always had no. About if you ask me, if I'm president, eight million votes with him no, every time that he ran. No, if for I'm office. President Buhari, yes, I'll raise somebody's hand. If, I'm, the, pres if I'm President, you Buhari, think if President Buhari raises the hand of a southerner, you still, you still no, find no, If I'm President Buhari today, where we are, I'll raise Lawan's hand because we have stabilized the parliament for him. He should be very grateful to the Night Assembly. We went through recession, and we have made laws that have to come out of recession many times. So the reason why I said we should bring back that list is that, you no, see, the likes of Bola Listen, oh, 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 I'm not interested in your list. No, 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 you I should be interested, be because in what this I'm is not my list, this is your party's no, list. I'm, I'm and these are Nigerians, you should be interested in no, them, because I've they are members of your no, party. Listen, I've endorsed a candidate. And I'm, that's why I'm not interested in that. We're having a conversation. I didn't invite you to discuss your candidate. We, I no, I, I invited I, you as a chieftain of your party no, you to talk about the ongoing. And yeah, I was you my opinion. Do you want me you, to you go have stated it. No, opinion. you have stated your opinion. And I will but continue I telling asking. you my opinion. I'm not going to look at the list. No, you, you, you will, sir. Okay, let me look at it. Look at the list, Show sir. me. Yeah, so what I'm saying that, for example, uh, you look at the first man on that list. Who's the first man? He was my colleague as governor. You think he doesn't have that... The spread. No, he the VP of is there. We have passed those stages you are talking about. We have passed all those stages. If they have conscience, they will not run. Because they have no conscience. Obasanjo was president for eight years. Oshubajo was vice president for eight years. 
And South Easterners have never got president for one year. How will you sleep if you are in my position? The gods of the land are asking questions in the land. Where are these people? The gods of the land? Yes. Which of the gods? The gods of the Igbo land. What is the god of Igbo land? <laughs> All the Igbo land land. They are asking questions. And what are they saying? They are asking, why must these people come again? These people you are showing me. Why what is the they are my friend. You know I was... And what is the answer to that you've told them? The answer is that they are greedy. They should stop being greedy. And that is what is killing Nigeria. If you, if you walk, you allow your brother to walk. If you rule, you allow your brother to rule. I'm being sincere. You know, I'm one of those that speak my mind. All of them in that list, they are my friends. They are personal friends of mine. There's none of them. And you, you are showing me Tidibu. You know my children live with Tidibu's wife for when we packed to Abia. They were going to school in Lagos. Nobody was in my house in Victoria Land. And they were living with them. So it's not a new thing to me. I also want people to have conscience before all of us die because we will die one day. So they should have conscience mm. and plead their conscience to themselves. If they sell, said Igbo president today of extraction, I would drop Abel Lawa. All right. Thank you so much. I mean, some women who, uh, who are not happy and uh, have taken it as a responsibility that each time we have members of the National Assembly here on the program, I need to ask you the five women bills that were shot down at the National Assembly. What are you going to do? To Please fix come that again. Program? I didn't hear the you. five women bills yes. that were shot out mm -hmm. and shot down by Did you your, know where your, I your vote? colleagues. No, no, I mean, no, it doesn't matter where you vote now. It's the fact that as, as, as a whole, as a group, You've shut down that bill, no, those bills. Well, I didn't, I, I didn't vote alone. It, that was the National Assembly. Everybody voted to his conscience. And I'm sure that Oje Kalu voted to my conscience. And the women know my stand. I'm very, because the strongest people in my life is my, my mother and my wife. And they are women. And my daughters, uh, they are mm. very strong to me. We we'll have to leave it at that. But let me also say that Governor Badaru is in the race. He's another northerner. Maybe you might make, change your mind tomorrow. Um, Governor Badaru has not lobbied me to, that he wants Maybe to if lobby. he does tomorrow and promises uh, maybe you. Maybe if he does. Because your me members of your party are saying you are, just, you are being promised vice presidential no. and senate presidency. No, no. And some people also will argue. Let me tell you, with that, that, that one, PDP, I'm, I'm ready to be the sweeper of the, of the, the place. I don't need to have position if I'm a lawa is president. That is the truth. A job is secured for you. Not a job. I can sweep the villa. My house is very close to the villa. I can be the sweeper of the villa. It's a stone throw. I'm very sure you're joking about that. No, I'm not joking. It's a reality. <laughs> I'm not sure you have, even have the strength. Your back can, uh, can, can be able to take that kind of job to sweep Who? the villa. <laughs> but we must leave it at that, Your Excellency. No, you can come and say that I sweep my house every morning. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming, It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Pressure is mine. Pressure is mine. Thank, Thank you so much. You. The former governor of Abia State and the Senate Chief Whip, Senator Oji Uzokali. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Well, let's switch quickly to our second issue for discussion tonight. And I'll be bringing on uh, a senior advocate of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, and the Attorney General of the Federation. Uh, the Minister of Justice, Zabuba Kamalami, are filed a suit at a Supreme Court seeking an interpretation of Section. 8412 of the Electoral Act uh, Amendment 2022. In the suit filed on April 29, the president and the AG, AGF, who are the plaintiffs, listed the National Assembly and as, as the sole defendant, they are asking, uh, seeking an order of the Apex Court to strike out a section of the Electoral Act saying it is inconsistent with the nation's constitution according to the court uh, document. The plaintiffs contend that, that Section 8412 of the Electoral Amendment Act 2022 is inconsistent with the provisions of Sections 42, 65, 66, 106, 107, 131, 137, 147, 151, 177, 182, 192, and 196 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, as well as Article 2 of the African Charter of Human and People and People's Rights. 
Meanwhile, the Federal High Court in Abuja today has fixed May 24 for the definite hearing in a suit instituted against President Muhammad Buhari by the People's Democratic Party PDP on Section 8411 and Section uh, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act. Justice Inyang Echo fixed the date today to enable the President and PDP to address the court on the effect of the judgment of the Court of Appeal in Abuja, which declared the contentious Section 8412 unconstitutional, null, and void. Let's get some legal perspective because this has really, really um, caused a lot of fear and debate within the political uh, scene in Nigeria. I'm being joined tonight by a very senior lawyer in Nigeria, senior advocate of Nigeria, Jibrin Okutapa. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you, Shenwu, for uh, dragging me here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for always yielding, because where we need this kind of clarification, we need sound legal uh, perspective. Uh, I know as of right, the Supreme Court on Section 1231, uh, I guess, has uh, given jurisdiction of uh, the Apex Court as to the areas that the Supreme Court can adjudicate upon. Uh, cases between state and states, cases between the federal government and state, cases between the National Assembly and the executive. For the case that the federal government, the uh, president of Nigeria, and the uh, AGF had gone to the Supreme Court about, what's your view on that position, on that, their position and their, uh, their dispute they filed? Well, uh, Shinwu, let me confess that uh, I'm a little bit constrained in being uh, blunt. This is because um, the matter is in court. But the, as a Nigerian, I will want to find out, uh, because I have not had the privilege of uh, meeting either the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria or the Honorable the Attorney General of the Federation, who are co-plaintiffs in that matter. But speaking for, for myself, when you look at Section 84, uh, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act, which is in contention, um, that section of the law has nothing to do with the federal government or Federal Republic of Nigeria. Um, that section talks about political office holders. I am not too sure that the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is a political appointee. He is an elected president of Nigeria. And I am also not sure that the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is a political appointee within the meaning of Section 84, subsection uh, 12 of the Electoral Act to confer on that office and the office of the Attorney General of the Federation to confer on them what um, in legal palace is called local standing. Uh, Mark you, the Supreme Court of Nigeria, yes, has um, jurisdiction to determine dispute between federal government or federal republic of Nigeria and the National Assembly where there is a justiciable dispute. And what is the dispute between the federal republic of Nigeria and the office of the Attorney General of the Federation? Mark you, the president of the federal republic of Nigeria signed the bill the National Assembly, in performance of their uh, legislative functions, uh, uh, passed the bill and sent it to Mr. President, who assented to it. So I am, I am finding it almost extremely difficult to see a justiciable dispute between the federal government and the office of the Attorney General of the Federation. Now, we must make a distinction between the occupant of the office of the Attorney General of the Federation who is a political appointee and the office of the Attorney General of the Federation, which is a creation of Nigerian constitution. So if it is the occupant of the office of the Attorney General of the Federation that had filed this suit in the Supreme Court, then there is a further challenge that I see because the additional jurisdiction of the Supreme Court as given to it by the National Assembly and Section uh, uh, 233 or so thereabout, yeah. does not confer um, locus on the occupant of the office of the Attorney General, who is a political appointee, to approach the Supreme Court. So the appropriate court, if the occupant of the office of the Attorney General, who is a political appointee, 
wanted to engage in interpretation and want a judicial opinion on the matter, the appropriate forum would have either been the Federal High Court or the, uh, the Federal High Court, not even either the Federal High Court. So you know, what I'm struggling to see, therefore, is what is the locus of the president of the Federal Republic for, of Nigeria. For the sake of our non-legally uh, oriented viewers, locus is uh, whether or not you have You have the a, grounds. a grievances. Yeah. There, there's something that affects you. Yeah. Do you have a ground? Do you have a, the, do you does have that section affect you, you in any at, way? In any way as a government? Because when the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria goes to court, mm -hmm. is not going to court as President Mohamed Buhari, the occupant of that office, who must make a distinction between the office of the president, the office of the governor, the office of the speaker, and the occupants of those offices. Section 84, subsection 12, talks about and affects Political office holder. I don't have a copy with me, yeah, but me if you it. have, is there on the screen? So, so you let, may look at it. Let, let's look at it again. Um, uh, section eighty-four, subsection twelve, and that's it. Let me read it out for the sake of our viewers. No political appointee at that any is the level. word. Political appointee. Who are political appointee? Ministers, commissioners, special advisors, and all of those people appointed politically. They are not elected government officials. The Attorney General of the Federation, as a person, is a political appointee. The Honorable Minister of Information and Culture is a political appointee. But the office of the Honorable Minister of uh, uh, Culture and um, Information and Culture is not a political appointee. President Mohamed Buhari is not a political appointee. He's an elected president of Nigeria. That section does not affect, it, affect him. So the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is not a political appointee for purposes of going to court to find out whether that section is in, unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. The only persons who have the local standard, the authority, the, 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 the grounds, the, the, the complaint, mm -hmm. those who can complain are those who are directly affected. That is why the judgments of the uh, Federal High Court in Umaya was set aside by the Court of Appeal, Abuja, because the person who went to court did not have the local standard to approach the court. Well, the question I ask, uh, um, uh, Sheung, is why are political appointees afraid of challenging the law? Why do we use the color of our office to challenge the law when that office is not affected thereby? Look, Supreme Court of Nigeria is a serious court that should deal with serious constitutional matter. Supreme Court does not have jurisdiction to render advisory opinion. There must be a justiciable dispute, a dispute that is worthy of judicial consideration between the National Assembly and the president or the attorney represented by the attorney general of the federation, not the occupant of the office of the attorney general, before the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court can be invoked. So, Supreme Court of Nigeria does not engage in determining academic question or hypothetical question or questions that have no live uh, issues. So, the, the president going to uh, seeking interpretation of the unconstitutionality of section 84, 84. subsection 12, when the president is not directly affected and when there is no dispute between even the National Assembly and the President. Mm. It makes me wonder whether... Uh, the, whether uh, uh, Leonard Six, sir, uh, some will, will argue on this issue, matter of locus that there is the restrictive, uh, in the case of Adesanya, restrictive uh, concept on the school of the locus and the liberal concept of locus. In the case of Dr. Beck or Ransom Kuti, first as the Attorney General of Federation, uh, in the case of the Guardian newspaper, when he went to court, and said, look, the court said, you do not have uh, the locus because you are not directly, he said, is in the public interest. Could this be one of the, such cases that also plays within the realm of the liberal school of thought 
of the locus. What is the, what is the public interest in section 80, 84, subsection 12, that the federal government is going to seek on behalf of political appointees? Shenwu, let's call a spade a spade. There are serious legal issues hmm. that, that the federal government and the office of the attorney general should devote their attention to, not to go and bring an action that affects uh, infinitesimal number of Nigerians. How many political appointees do we have in Nigeria? And how many of them nurture the ambition of running for office? Or how many of them indeed are elected delegates to participate in the affairs of the polit uh, political parties? Uh, Lawrence, it, it could it be the interment of uh, the position of the president and the attorney general be that, look, there was an error of an issue when, before the president signed, and it clearly stated it See, out. See, before that, uh, there was an error of an issue. Yeah, it discovered, it discovered there, that. Look. There, that error does not translate to a justiciable dispute because the president in the court of equity will be extolled from even complaining because he signed. Mm. If you open your eye widely and sign a law, an error, an error that you see, can you then be turned back, uh, turned back to say, oh, uh, uh, this law ought not to be there. Mark you, the president had rejected the signing of this bill initially. It was taken to the National Assembly. Then there were, there were sections of certain provisions in that constitution. The complaint then was that uh, this your direct uh, primary provisions is not going to work. Bring in indirect or consensus. And the National Assembly, in the performance of their legislative duty under the Constitution, went back, looked at the law, and did what they needed to do and passed the law. Now, the same National Assembly had, whether day before or last week or so, also done some amendment to the provisions of this Electoral Act in respect of the provision of the uh, Constitution, I mean, that Act, that says that before you can be a delegate, it must have to be by democratic means. That law was amended. Mark you also that there was an attempt or a, a, a letter sent to the National Assembly by the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria seeking an amendment of that same section of the Electoral Act. And that bill or that uh, uh, proposal is still within the right. uh, National Assembly. Awesome. Except, of course, the president is saying that the failure of the National Assembly to accede to his request has constituted a justiciable dispute, mm. for which, again, a question may be asked. Is a refusal to make law a justiciable dispute to go to the Supreme Court between the Federation and the National Assembly within the intendment of the additional jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Mm. All I am struggling to say is that their lordships at the Supreme Court have been overwhelmed and overburdened with some matters before them that instead of these um, ventures, we should have improved on their working conditions, additional judges, justices of that court appointed uh. for Nigerian to get quicker justice uh, in the uh, court. Uh, I see this yeah. case going there as adding for that body, body because the that. law is that no matter how a matter looks, even if it looks very um, unnecessary, I don't want to use the word, the court must look at it. All right. So we, we need to anchor now, and we need to do that in about 20 seconds. But in respect of this, the president made a decision that, look, if you are in my cabinet and you are running for office, resign. Uh, is this also about this fear? So, if he says so, which means he's paying fidelity to section 84, subsection 12. 12. Can he now be said to go to court to ask for the interpretation of that provision? Could it be and because of posterity? Which posterity? Let him leave the posterity. When anybody comes in future and he feels seriously affected by yeah. that provision, that individual, the point I'm making is that the office of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is not affected by the provisions and therefore, you cannot manufacture a justiciable dispute to clothe the Supreme Court with jurisdiction. Right. And I think that when our political class go to court 
I pray that also they should make the working condition of our judiciary more conducive, conducive right. for other Nigerians because there are more things that the government needs to do for other Nigerians to attain quick justice than this kind of, of uh, political suit, uh, suit yeah. that Thank you so much, is right. intended to interfere with the quick dispensation of, of other cases. All right. Senior Advocate of Nigeria, it's always a pleasure. The way you put things and clarify it is always uh, putting things, laying them to uh, laying them bare and getting perspective for Nigerians. Many thanks for as an advocate for, for you. your industry tonight. Thank you. I Shimi. appreciate it. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to say that uh, what somebody said yesterday to you. So <laughs> your brain is still correct. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> for validating my brain. <laughs> and that's our for today, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm sure I'll keep Bye for now. <laughs>